Every day is full of choices that we make. Uh, for the moment we wake up, uh, to the moment we return back to bed in the evening, um, every minute of every day we are making choices. Uh, choices how to live. We choose who to spend time with. We choose who to uh, be with, who to follow, who to act like. And uh, we're making choices in our words and actions and thoughts and attitude and feelings. And, um, and really each day what we are doing is we're choosing who to live for. Uh, we are either living for, we're either choosing to live for God or we're choosing to live for self, which is really choosing to live for Satan. I mean, that's what Satan wants. Um, you know, Satan wants us to live for self, to do what we want and um, to fulfill the desires of the flesh. Um, but when we come to know God and we come to know sin and with God's judgment against sin, we know then if we are going to uh, have God's mercy and forgiveness and uh, overcome sin and have forgiveness and hope of eternal life, then we're going to have to choose God. We're going to have to choose to live for God each day. And that's really what I'm reminded of, at least, in David's psalm in Psalm 26. If you want to turn there with me, open it up uh, to your Bibles, um, or listen along as we read from Psalm 26 today. Um, as I read this and read through this, really, you know, the, the overall message, I think, of what, you know, David is getting at, this being a psalm of David, is really choosing God. Uh, choosing God over self, over this world, choosing to follow in the paths of righteousness, to walk in the light of God, and, um, to, and knowing that, as David's going to say here, we're going to be judged by God. Um, and really, we are to be living to please God and to answer to God and to know that we are right with God. That should be our, our number one priority every day is I, I'm living for God. You know, I'm, I'm living to please God. I'm not living to please myself. I'm not living to please the world around me. Is I want to know God. I want to love God because he loves me. And I want to give my life to him, my heart to him, my mind to him. I want to I wanna know that at the end, throughout every day, at the end of every day, at the end of my life, that I will know with confidence that I served God, that I lived for the Lord. And that is really what David is getting at here in Psalm 26, beginning in verse 1, when he starts this psalm and says, Vindicate me, O Lord. You know, the idea of vindicate, uh, to be vindicated, um, you know, that's really, he's calling for the Lord to judge him. Uh, for the purpose of, if you will, clearing his name or, you know, proving uh, David to be a just man um, is ultimately the idea of his psalm here um, is just calling out to the Lord, uh, David praying in, in confidence and, you know, God's love and mercy and grace says, he says, vindicate me, O Lord, for I have walked in my integrity. I have also trusted in the Lord, I will not slip. Examine me, O Lord. There's an idea too, you know, examine me. Um, you know, look in my heart and my mind, uh, as he says, prove me or test me there in verse two. So examine me, O Lord, and test me. Try my mind and my heart. Your loving kindness is before my eyes and I have walked in your truth. I I have not sat with idolatrous mortals, uh, nor will I go in with hypocrites. I have hated the assembly of evildoers and will not sit with the wicked. You know, as I read this, and even as I read through this, it you know it almost you know may seem to come across as you know David is being you know arrogant or proudful, boasting in himself of you know look at me, I'm righteous, I'm good, I'm doing you know this that, but that that's not David's meaning. Here, that's not his intention. Really, what this is is a knowing and confidence, the the loving kindness, the promises of God to bless those who are faithful to the Lord and living for Him. And so, as David is calling out to the Lord for judgment, for vindication, and he is saying, you know, he just wants to know that he's walking in the way of the Lord. He's saying, I've, I've I'm trusting in the Lord. I'm walking in integrity. 
I, I'm walking in the truth of the Lord. He says, verses 4 and 5, you know, I, I don't want to have anything to do with those in, who are sinning. In the sense of David says, I don't want to follow those who are in sin, who are doing wickedly. I, I have no part with them, no fellowship with them. Basically, David's saying he is choosing righteousness over sin. And so he is calling to the Lord and the loving kindness of the Lord saying, you know, Lord, I, I see you. I love you. I'm doing my best to follow you. And David calling out to the Lord, wanting the Lord to know this. And as I read this, really what this is even reminding me is, you know, can I say this? You know, can I say the, the same things to the Lord of Lord, you know, prove me to be just, you know, can I say with confidence and in truth that I am walking in integrity, that I'm walking in righteousness, that I'm walking in the Lord's truth, that I'm not following or joining with those of the world who are doing things they shouldn't be doing. Can I say with David as he goes on in verse 6 that I will wash my hands in innocence so I will go about your altar, O Lord, that I may proclaim with the voice of thanksgiving and tell of all your wondrous works. Lord, I have loved the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. David, David knows that his, you know, relationship with the Lord is, is impacted, is affected, is, uh, you know, going to be based upon, is, is he living for the Lord? Does he love God? Is he living for God? As he says, I'm going to wash my hands in innocence so I can be with, in the presence of the Lord, proclaim his wonderful works, you know, loving the habitation of the Lord, um, you know, as David has said in previous Psalms, you know, who, who can be in the presence of God? Well, it is those who are not going to follow sin. Not, it is going to be those who are choosing God over sin and over this world. As he, excuse me, goes on to say in verses 9 and 10, Do not gather my soul with sinners, nor my life with bloodthirsty men, in whose hands is a sinister scheme, and whose right hand is full of bribes. David doesn't want to get caught up in that crowd. He doesn't want to be destroyed with that crowd either. Uh, David knows the judgment and wrath that God is going to bring upon those who are in sin. And David says, uh-uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not, I don't want to be part of that crowd. I don't want to follow them. I don't want to be with them. I especially don't want to be with them when the wrath of God comes upon them. Again, David is choosing God. David is choosing God in his life every day, choosing to walk in the truth and righteousness and holiness of God, trusting in the Lord because the Lord is his hope. As he finishes this Psalm, verses 11 and 12, but as for me, I walk in my integrity. I walk in my integrity. Redeem me and be merciful to me. I mean, David is not relying on himself. David is not saying, I mean, in his, you know, proclaiming his innocence and his faithfulness to the Lord here, David's not, you know, trying to make that sound like, you know, David is saved because of himself or that he's right with God because, oh, you know, look, I'm such a good, wonderful person and, you know, God owes me this. No, because he still says, he still knows he needs the redemption from the mercy and, and the mercy of the Lord and the grace of the Lord. But he knows that in the loving kindness of God, that he still has to make sure he is living for the Lord each day, faithful in righteousness, not walking in sin. And so he says, verse 12, my foot stands in an even place and in the congregations, I will bless the Lord. What I see here in David's psalm is really him in his heart saying, Lord, I choose you. Lord, I love you. Lord, I am doing my best every day to walk in integrity, to live for you, to keep my life free from sin, to stay away from evil and bad influences. And this is encouraging to me. This is a reminder to me, and I hope it is to all of us, to do the same, to every day. To choose God, to choose to live for God, to love God, to want to please God and draw near to God. 
And to be able to say, I mean, can I say like David that I am I will walk in integrity, that I will be holy, that I will be um, faithful to the Lord. That needs to be my goal every single day. And, you know, it may be, hopefully not, but it may be that I, I may I may fail at that on some occasions. But this needs to be my motivation. This needs to be my drive and my focus. This needs to be my determination and commitment every day that I am going to live my life for the Lord. I'm going to walk in integrity. I'm going to walk in the truth of the Lord. I'm going to be who God wants me to be. I'm going to choose righteousness over sin, choose God over sin. I'm going to choose, you know, good influences in my life and I'm going to uh, stay away from the, the bad influences in my life because I want to be close to God. I want to walk in God's light and his righteousness. I want to rejoice in God. I want to proclaim the excellencies of God. I want to proclaim the goodness of God, his mercy, his grace. I will bless the Lord. Not only in my words and songs and prayers and worship, but in how I live my life every day. Choose God. Let's all choose God each day and say with David that we will walk in integrity and to say to the Lord, willingly, freely, Lord, examine me. Know my heart, know my life. I mean, if we've got nothing to hide, then we have nothing to fear. And if there is something that we have done wrong, well, we need to repent of it and make it right with God so that then we can say, Lord, examine me. Know me, be merciful to me, and help me choose you each day. Choose God. God bless.